I want to say hello to my beautiful new friends, my new subscribers, the people who commented on my videos, people who wrote me in emails. You're beautiful, and uh, you're not alone. I can assure you. It's interesting. Um, I don't want to go off on a tangent. I said I was going to talk about toxic masculinity and toxic femininity tonight. So I'll start with the one that I have difficulty pronouncing. I'll start with the toxic femininity. Um, I recently made a new friend who's marvelous and lovely, very beautiful lady, by the way, uh, inside and out, who's gone through a lot of mobbing in her neighborhood. Make a long story short, I don't want to go into something that's not mine to go into. Mobbing is mobbing, whether it happens in the workplace, uh, in the neighborhood, in an organization where you're volunteering, um, it just happens. So. There are a couple of reasons that this happens. And the more you look into social psychological principles, I believe the more you end up understanding what's going on. We will get into this. But for now, I'm going to talk about something called toxic femininity. All right. Oftentimes, the victims of mobbing, and again, I don't want to create a division. I think we're all in it together, male, female, whatever you identify as. I don't really care <laughs> what difference does it make, right? Um, and like I said, my mobbers were both men and women, so I can speak to both sides. And what I instinctively feel, and I can back it up with a lot of data as well. So the way I define toxic femininity is um, taking a trait that is typically female and exaggerating it. So, you know, the typical stereotypical woman does what? She has a problem with someone and she stops talking to them, all right? Or little girls in the schoolyard want to exclude somebody. They're not going to hit her. They're not going to hit the other, which is typically another female. Uh, they're not going to be overt and tell her, we think you're a bitch or anything of the sort. What they're going to do is exclude and ostracize the person. Gossip. When we think of gossip, even though men gossip, believe me, we think of women. All right, so I'm going to apply the whole toxic femininity thing, all right, to women right now, all right? Even though, like I said, these traits do apply to all genders, like across the board in a greater or lesser degree. So here I'm female, okay, and I identify as female, um, but I carry a lot of relatively masculine traits, okay? And I carry a lot of feminine traits as well. It just is what it is. So you know, before I get bashed with the whole toxic femininity thing, I got to put it out there. All right. So here we go. Gossip. Gossip, smear campaigns, jealousy, all of those things are part of the whole toxic femininity deal. So mobbing tends to happen to people who are either pretty individualistic, don't like to stick to a particular group. Um, it doesn't mean you're weak. If you're introverted, you're introverted. If you don't like to hang with particular people or you like to be by yourself mostly, it's your right. You're allowed to do that. Like, who says otherwise? Oftentimes, people who mob look at you as the other. They will try to attribute certain things to you that aren't really the case. Okay? Like, I recently read an article about how you shouldn't be smiling so much at work. I'll post it at the end. Hopefully, I won't get in trouble, but I figure links are okay. Right? So I'm not using copyrighted content or anything, but it's a link and it's an interesting one. So say I'm a smiler. I'm a pretty happy person. So I'm one of those people who walks around smiling very often. Uh, a couple of the women that I worked with noticed, picked up on it, and hated it. And I could tell by the looks that they gave me or the comments that they made when they started doing certain things. I'll give you an example. So uh, there was one in particular who was definitely trying to climb the crappy corporate ladder, all right? And like I said, these were not big jobs. These are low-level, shitty jobs. And to even increase a level takes many years, okay? Typically, even if you're the biggest suck and brown nose are around. I've seen it all. Oh, anyhow. So here's one of those corporate climbers who's not unattractive, but, you know, kind of fat and frumpy around my age group. Um... And uh, what she started doing is looking at me and saying, hello, missy. 
So she did that a couple of times until finally I looked at her and I said, my name's not Misty. It's Jenny. That's my name. Anyhow. So uh, it kind of stopped her cold. But prior to having done that, say I was outside, I'd go for my cigarette, I'd see her. Before I got what was going on, I'd wave. She'd look right at me. She wouldn't wave back. So that's pretty toxic behavior, right? Like even if you don't like someone, if somebody says good morning, you say good morning back. I mean, if you're a normal person, you would figure, right? Okay, but some people don't operate on that level. They're very political. They have a particular agenda. And this person was involved in my mobbing. All right, so she was, and remember, mobbing is planned. So it, it kind of all fits together. So that's pretty toxic. Another one is um, one of the uh, person who incited the mobbing was someone who was, I, I guess you could say, kind of a friend. I'd gone out with her on maybe three or four occasions outside of work. And she would complain all the time and bitch about, you know, how she was overlooked, et cetera, et cetera. Now, she was at a very different position than I was, a much higher position. But she was extremely jealous of me. All right, and, and her story was pretty brutal. She had been with a man who was providing her very nice things, all right? She had been with him for about five years, and she came out with this information that she hadn't been intimate with him. Um, they consummated the relationship one time in a period of five years. Now, what's weird is that my spouse and I, we had gone out the first time that we went out with her, was with another friend. We casually invited her, and she came, and it was nice. And my spouse noticed, he goes, it's funny how her eyes are really watery, right? Like, her eyes are watery. She looks like she's been through some pretty bad times, and she had touched upon some of the issues she was having at work. I felt very sorry for this person, all right? But in a typical, in a typically toxic fashion, and again, I'll say a toxically feminine fashion, whatever I had told her, uh, she triangulated. She went to tell other people, like say she was talking about my boss, saying, you know, he's so weak and he's this and he's that. I never said, yes, he's weak, right? Although I thought it. She knew it, I'm sure. But I would tell her, it's like, ah, you know what? Big deal. It's not, you know, the be all end all. And I'm leaving here anyways right? Um, but whatever she said, she applied to me. How I know this? Well, what had happened at one point, and this is a big lesson for me, is I helped her. She had had a big argument with uh, the bosses, the two big bosses where I work. And up until this point, there was no mobbing going on. There, was, there were just little incidents, like seeds had already been planted. So as my bosses were talking about this, I interjected and I said, you know what? She doesn't like it here because they were saying that. I wasn't giving them the information. I was just parroting what they were saying. I said, so she doesn't like it here. And she wants to apply, say, in another branch of this big organization. Why don't you let her? Why don't you support her? And one of the bosses said, you know what? I think that's a good idea. All right. So all of a sudden, she's talking to other people, saying that thanks to me and my advocacy that, you know, she managed to get out of this terrible environment. But it was weird. She never touted me about anything before, right? She would actually kind of subtly put me down, okay? I'll give you an example. I'm a pretty big specialist when it comes to um, finances. It's an area of expertise of mine. But, and she was doing the same type of work. And she would make some mistakes. I never called her on them. I mean, you know, if I got the file, I would just correct them. And then she would start talking about how certain people in, you know, other branches were very adept at this, and they were the ones who should look at it. When she knew very well I had all of the tools to do this myself. Okay. So uh, what people that are toxic do is... They might take little truths of what you said and then add in lies and spread them around. They're very basic. It's all jealousy of a happy marriage. I don't have a lot, but what I have is genuine and real. And people that are uh, really 
I'll say they they were oppressed and they have suppressed themselves. Okay, don't like people who are free. Don't like people who are different. Uh, are inherently wary and very jealous. It just is what it is. So get a group of women around that see a woman who's a little bit different, not terrible looking. I mean, it's not like I'm a beauty or anything, but you know, for someone my age, I think I look okay. I mean, I've had a little help from my friends along the way, but that's all right. Can't afford those things right now. Um, but that's just what it is, right? So I'm not a big lady, you know, at a certain age, people tend to get a little frumpy and dumpy. Uh, I know how to dress, I have a little style. I like myself. And a lot of people out there don't like themselves. So they feel the need to conform to some kind of group dynamic, women especially. It just is the sad reality of what it is. Um, another thing, for instance, when this whole Me Too thing came out, it infuriated me, and I'll tell you why. Not because I don't believe in the sisterhood, all right, but I believe in truth and reality. So when you see a bunch of rich Hollywood women taking over a movement that was started by working class black women that no one had ever heard of before, it was infuriating. Besides, the way I looked at it, a lot of the people that were proponents of Me Too didn't think about it critically. They didn't go deeper into the whole spiel. They didn't see that a lot of the women that were complaining, say, about Harvey Weinstein, they made a deal with Weinstein. You're not going to go to somebody's hotel room that, you know, is has this degree of power alone, thinking that everything's going to be good and you're just going to talk about your career. Look, stuff like this has happened to me in the past. I was a pretty cute uh, woman. I mean, I was never in Hollywood, but I'll tell you, I used to work in the transportation industry. And at one point, I was selling in the transport industry. We had this huge client. I'm not going to mention the name of the client, okay? Huge, big corporation uh, based in province of Quebec. I'll go that far. And what happened was the person who was in charge of the shipping was just nothing but a dirty old man. Uh, so here I was in my late 20s and um, I was selling. And we already had the contract, the Quebec contract. But remember, now he was in charge of the rest of Canada. So he basically offered me uh, to get all of the freight across the country if I'd sleep with him. So my response was simple. It was like, hey, you know what? If you want to find someone like that, good luck. You can. I'll take care of the freight that you care about. And the rest, use whoever you like and have a good time. But if I'm going to prostitute myself, I'm not going to do it for some pallets and a commission. I'll do it directly. I'll do it the honest way. All right. He didn't like that very much. So he threatened to pull the freight away from me. I told my boss, I had a great boss at the time who happened to be a man who stood beside me, like by me, and uh, took care of the situation effectively. Okay. But definitely I was approached. I was approached a number of times, but I said no. Now, obviously I, you know, didn't make maybe all the money I could have made or had the great career I could have otherwise had, but that was my choice. I'm not saying that it's fair. It's gross. It's how power works. Whether the person in power is male or female. In any case, in a nutshell, that's my toxic femininity spiel. I'm going to come back and talk about how sometimes this type of toxic femininity uh, actually is one of the root causes for toxic masculinity. So not only did I want to start off with this because I have difficulty pronouncing it, I wanted to put it out there as a base right now. I know this is a bit of a video diary right now. I'm going to change the format for some of the videos to make it a bit clearer and better defined. Um, and I encourage you, even if you don't like what I said, write me, comment. As long as it's not rude or vulgar, I'll post it. Even if I don't agree with it, I'll post it. I kind of like that. I'll plant these little seeds, uh, not because I think I'm, I'm leading or guiding anybody, but these are my ideas, obviously. It's my video. I can only speak for me, right? Um, but I like to plant the seeds. I like to see what other people think. So don't be shy. I'm getting better. I'm sorry for the people who did comment. It took me a number of days 
to see the comments, okay? I'm an oldie. I'm getting used to this stuff, but I'll get better at it, I promise. So for now, in a nutshell, that's the Toxic Femininity video. I'll be adding more probably a little bit later. But uh, that's it in a nutshell. I wish you all a beautiful day. Ciao, love.